picture to bring me. Words of wisdom, joys to assist us on our spiritual path, and we will get an assignment. And so please join me, put your hands together, and welcome our pastor, John C. Changing them 
for the better, forever. How does she do this, you ask? I will get you into a secret. Silence is the firstborn child of God. She has sometimes been called the word. She proceeds, precedes any kind of original creation, whether it be a galaxy or any way to stir private goals. All of those were invented, created, or explored, did so after consulting the silence. So, Kathy Ambrose writes, be still. Be still and know that I am. We call God. So, what I'm writing at this morning is inspired by that favorite hymn of mine, that favorite carol, Silent Night, in German, Still in Act. It was written by an Austrian priest, Father Joseph Moore, in 1816, and given the melody we are all familiar with by another Austrian, Franz Buber, in 1818, and it was performed for the first time in um, October of 1818. Silent Night, the carol, has become an anchor of Christmas celebrations throughout the world. It's not a like melody and simple message of heavenly peace can be heard in small number of churches and we have one in every street corner in Jamaica. And in great cathedrals across the globe, can be heard in outdoor camp concerts in Australia and in palm flash spots in northern Peru. All the global creation that carol moves for at the time of Christmas. And the passage that opens my heart and takes me into the stillness is that passage that goes, how silently, how silently, the one who has given is given. I think often uh, that very few people have that sort of task as blinding, flash of light and awareness, thank God, the only more central nervous system could stand it. Instead, the knowledge of our divinity comes quietly in the silence of our souls and is to be welcomed. Every day of the year, but particularly, we're reminded to welcome it at Christmas time. In the science of my textbook, the father of our teaching, Dr. Ernest Holmes, writes of finding the Christ in this transcendent silence. I quote, It was impossible for Jesus not to have become the Christ, as the man gave way to the divine, as the man gave way to God, as the flesh gave way to spirit. Vision gave way to the will of unity. Jesus the man became a living embodiment of the Christ. If we can look upon Jesus from this viewpoint, we shall be able to study his life as a living example. And Holmes makes the point that the Bible makes it more than plain that he was a man like we are. Further explaining that, and I quote, as the human gives way to the divine in all people, they become the Christ. In the case of Jesus, there was such a surrendering of an isolated will that a greater incarnation of the divine actually took place. The mystic Christ comes from the bosom of the unseen father, proclaiming the love of God through his own love of humanity. As, Angel, as Angela and Valerie softly play Silent Night, Holy Night, I invite you to become still and listen with your hearts to Ernest Holmes' immortal Finding the Christ. Asleep in the heart of cosmic love, unborn, Universal, potential, the Christ's child lay. And the great mother soul, brooding over her unborn child, conceived it in the stillness of her universal nature, imparting to it her own being. Born into time and experience, unnoticed, unseen, yet alive and aware, the Christ child incarnated in human form, taking the likeness of men and women, yet giving no sign of its presence. 
waiting with utmost patience and love the revelation that should disclose itself and proclaim the reign of peace. Many ages passed and vanished in the long yesterdays of time, and still the Christ child waited. Nations appeared and disappeared, toil, famine, pestilence and want, hunger, cold, heat and thirst, war, hatred, blood and ruin, and still the seed of perfection unrevealed. But the universal wholeness cannot be forever sub subjected, nor cosmic love be kept from human form. That which was given must be revealed. The seed of perfection must burst. The shoots of heavenly planting must break the cords that bind, fanning the human into a blaze divine. And so the long appointed day arrived, and a voice from out the stillness spoke, this is my beloved son. Let the earth be still in his presence. Let the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and all living creatures be still. Let the hosts of heaven sing praises, and let deep cry unto deep. Then spoke the child, I am come to bring peace. I am the child of joy, and to all who will, I give life. I am formed of happiness. I come from the eternal stillness, quietness, and confidence are mine. In the heart of the Father, I have lived forever. All nations and all people look unto me and be saved. Behold my face shining as the sun and my feet shod with righteousness. In my left hand are riches and honor and in my right peace forevermore. All that I am, all that I have, I give. Joy to the world, my family and friends, the Lord is come. Christ, the idea of universal sonship, is come. The entire creation, both visible and invisible, recognizes the coming in the stillness of this beautiful gift from God. One Father of all, conceiving within himself, gives birth to the divine ideas that created us, he knew that the human embodies the divine and that it manifests the Christ nature. And so this brings me to your assignment. Everybody knows when they come to the Temple of Light on a Sunday when I speak, I always give an assignment. And because Christmas is a time when we express our appreciation to those who have been a blessing to us, and we express appreciation for our gifts that we receive. Your assignment, your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is to spend some time in the silence today. Don't wait for another day, do it today. Give yourself the gift of a few minutes of silence 
And then I want you to write yourself a letter from God expressing appreciation for all that you bring to life. A letter to you from your indwelling father. Just write your name there and put your name. I want to express my appreciation for. And then list all of the qualities and abilities and attributes and talents that you bring to life. However insignificant you might think they are, the world would not be the same without them. So express your appreciation and give yourself the gift of appreciation today. And then at the end, after you have listed all the qualities, attributes, spiritual, mental, physical, which, you, which God has blessed you, at the end of it, just write, all that I am, all that I have, I give. All that I am, all that I have, I give. I'd like to close by sharing one of my favorite stories about giving at Christmas. And it comes from Chicken Soup for the Soul by Dan Clark. You want to hear that story? A friend of mine named Paul received an automobile from his brother for a Christmas gift. On Christmas Eve, when Paul came out of his office, a street urchin was walking around the shiny new car, eyes on stalks admiring it. Is this your car, mister? He asked. Paul nodded. My brother gave it to me for Christmas. The boy was astounded. You mean your brother gave it to you and it didn't cost you anything? Boy, I, 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 I wish. He hesitated. Of course, Paul knew what he was going to wish for. He was going to wish he had a brother like that. But what the child said jarred Paul all the way down to his heels. I wish, said the lad, that I could be a brother like that. Paul looked at the boy in astonishment and impulsively asked, would you like to take a ride? Oh yes, I'd love that. So after a short ride, the boy turned and with his eyes aglow said, Mister, would you mind driving in front of my house? Paul smiled a little. He thought he knew what the lad wanted. He wanted to show his neighbors that he would ride ho could ride home in a big automobile. But Paul was wrong again. Will you stop there, where uh, that house with the two steps? Asked the boy. He ran up the steps, and then in a little while, Paul heard him coming back, but he was not coming back fast. He was carrying his little crippled brother. He sat down on the bottom step, and then sort of squeezed up against him and pointed to the car. There she is, buddy, just like I told you. His brother gave it to him for Christmas, and it didn't cost him a cent. And someday, I'm going to give you one just like it. Then you can see for yourself all the pretty things in the Christmas windows that I've been telling you about. Paul got out and lifted the ladder to the front seat of the car, and the elder brother climbed in beside him, and the three of them began a memorable holiday ride. That Christmas Eve, Paul learned what Jesus meant when he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Wow. Let us say together, I am formed of happiness. Together. I come from the eternal stillness. Quietness and confidence are mine. In the heart of the Father, I have lived forever. All that I am, all that I have, I give. And to my friends, in the stillness of this busy period, when you take time to be still, to discover that wonderful gift, the gift of your own sacredness, your own holiness, your own wholesomeness, your own beauty, your own joy, Know that the angel songs are singing at your recognition of the Christ's presence in you. And remember, all that I am and all that I have, I give. Namaste. Namaste.